right now. Right now, we're doing the I'm covering the Tennessee primary races, and it looks like the Republicans are going to outvote the Democrats in Tennessee, which is kind of unusual. But Democratic stronghold of Democratic stronghold Memphis has hasn't come in, so there's that, but I, I think I got some even better news. Oh, oh, it's not as crazy as I thought it was, but Carl Dean won the Democratic nomination. He ran it against House Democratic House Minority Leader Craig Fitzhugh. That's no surprise. Carl Dean was mayor of Nashville, I believe, Tennessee, home of country music. Plus, Carl Dean also spent $4.4 million, and Craig, Craig Fitzhugh spent just under a million. So, like a 4.5 to 1 spending ratio. No surprise, Carl Dean won with 78.4% of the vote. Well, I thought it would be more in the 60s since I did think Craig Fitzhugh, House Minority Leader, he got some educational endorsements and things like that. Educational institutions, he peeled those off and called in. I thought that would, I thought that would make it more in the 60s, but Carl Dean did, had a pretty good night at 78.1%. I knew he would win, but and then another thing disappointing for the Trump Republicans, Congresswoman Diane Black is running like she is. She has a Trump endorsement, and then she's in third. Bill Lee's in first at 36.6. Randy Boyd's in second at 26.4. Diane Black has 21.5. And also worth noting, the House, House Tennessee State House Speaker Beth Harwell is in fourth at 14.9. She was never going to win, but the question was how well would she do? I thought Diane Black would win this, but there's still a long way to go. And the Senate primary, former governor easily won. He got 93.2% of the vote. A couple of guys who I've never heard of got 4 and 3% of the vote. So Another big one was, this is slightly disappointing for Republicans, but it's not too big of a deal. Marsha Blackburn won the Republican primary. She, I'm just going to say, only got 84.2% of the vote to her opponent here in Pettigrew at 15.8. If you're a Republican going into a big, close Senate race, you're going to watch your primary number if you have an easy primary to be around 90, 92, 93. So with the Republicans out voting now, I think Blackburn's in early edge just one out, but I... We see that Bredesen has the support of the United Democratic Party now that he's at 93% in the primary. Blackburn just needs to get, get those pedigree voters. That just hopes only about 5% of them go to Phil Bredesen. Blackburn, if she just holds her if she just holds holds her primary voters, she's the next senator from Tennessee. The thing is how many registered Republicans voted for Marsha Blackburn at the top of the ticket because they're because they wanted to vote Republican in other races, but are going to vote for Phil Bredesen in the in the general election. That's the question. Well, I'm going to calculate right now how many Marsha Blackburn could afford to lose. Marsha Blackburn has 328,000 votes. Phil Bredesen has 165,000. So if Marsha Blackburn loses 80,000, that would put her at 268,000, add 80,000 to Bredesen. Yeah, she could afford to lose about 85 to 90,000 of her coalition. So she just needs to hold her coalition, get the Trump, get the Trump vote out, and she'll be doing fine. And what Bredesen needs to do is. First, he needs to sure up his own coalition and get the guys with 4 and 3 percent. Those couple of guys, he needs to get them to get his endorsement. He needs to get that within a day. 
and then he needs to go start reminding everyone how popular of a governor he was, how he won every county in, every county in 2006, how he left office as a 74% approval rating. That's what Bredesen needs to do. I think the Tennessee governor's race is going red. Because a big city, Knoxville, probably the third largest city in Tennessee, is going to go Republican by 67%. We just saw it tonight. We just saw it tonight. It was a WWE wrestler, Cade, for God's sakes, won that. 67 to 30. So yeah, Knox County is going to go Republican. Chattanooga is the fourth largest city. That, according to primary turnout, is Chattanooga. According to primary turnout, it's gonna be cl it's gonna go to the Republicans. Also, Nashville is gonna be a big Democratic stronghold. We have nothing from Memphis, but if the Democrats want any chance of flipping Tennessee senator and or governor. They're going to have to get the African Americans to turn out in Memphis. They're going to have to get... They're going to they're gonna have to get the areas of Memphis and Nashville to turn out at record numbers. And they're going to have to peel off, like, probably 20% of these ex-urban voters. That's what they're going to have to do if they want any chance of working Tennessee. is in Tennessee, all the Republicans need to do is unite the party. They're not running Al Gore. Democrats don't have an Al, have Al Gore or anything. In 2000, Al Gore took me in Tennessee. I honestly don't think, I think Phil Bredesen will make it close. I think Carl Dean will make it somewhat close, but... I think Carl Dean will probably just run up the numbers in Nashville, but I'm already seeing around the outer Memphis suburbs that State House Minority Leader Craig Fitzhugh, who has been at, not war, but has been at disagreements with Carl Dean through his primary process, is getting around the distant Memphis suburbs, but in the near Memphis suburbs, Carl Dean seems to be doing in the county right next to right next to Shelby County aka Memphis Paul Dean is only by two points over Craig Fitzhugh so yeah it looks like these suburbs are not gonna go for Carl Dean the county to the to the direct east though Paul Dean is up by 21 points. He's still underperforming. Huh? He's still underperforming what he's doing in the rest of the state. But Memphis, we have nothing out of Memphis. But the way the suburbs are going, Carl Dean's underperforming himself. In the rest of the state, I think Carl Dean's gonna have problems getting the African Americans out and everything. I think he'll do well in Nashville, probably making a 10 to 12 point race. But I don't think he'll go much farther than that. I'll be an okay candidate, but probably not going to win. Now, we'll wait for this Tennessee governor race on the Republican side to get called. What the Republicans need to do, assuming Bill Lee is about a 10 point lead, if Bill Lee wins this primary, he needs to get the Randy Boyd voters and the Diane Black voters, the Bethany Harwell voters. Those are the top four, those are the four candidates with over 1%. They're the only four legitimate candidates. We need to get those voters together. I think the Beth Harwell voters will be pretty easy to get. Diane Black, Diane Black is pretty much a female version of Trump. In her political view, she helped write the tax cuts. If Trump gets behind Bill Lee, that'll be a pretty easy endorsement. Randy Boyd, don't know too much about, but he must be relatively well known to be second primary would get 25% of the vote or so. 
I'm just gonna Google who he is. Looks like he's from Knoxville, Tennessee, where Kane just won his mayor's election. So if Randy Boyd does somehow come back, he's got Knoxville. That's the third largest city, probably at Chattanooga. He's got to the east of all that, if you're familiar with Tennessee. He's got to lock up every one of those counties. Tennessee won't be too hard of a state to win, but before I thought it would go blue. Now seeing the primary results, seeing Bredesen did really well, but primary turnout's a big thing. And there's been a Survey Monkey Axios poll. Those are nonpartisan, and it was the first one to show a candidate with over 50, 51%. Show Marsha Blackburn at 55% and Phil Bredesen at 41. So that's closer than what Tennessee usually is. But the only thing that matters is Democrats' slim hopes of winning back the Senate. It, it has to go through Tennessee, and I'm just not seeing it. So yeah, that's what's going on there. I'm just going to look at some of the polls and the official nominees are now yeah Marsha Blackburn, Phil Bredesen Marsha Blackburn has Donald Trump, Mike Pence, Lamar Alexander, Bob Corker as her top endorsements and plus Diane Black the woman who's running for governor she'll get her voters he's got Bill Haslam who's the governor of Tennessee, Steve Scalise who's the house minority whip and a bunch of state senators I've never heard of. Diamond and Sill. Okay. And some other ones I notice are... A big ones are... Randy Boyd, he's the candidate for governor. Bill Lee, who's going to be the Republican nominee for governor, are behind are behind Marsha Blackburn in the Senate race and also Tommy Lahren, that's... Okay, Chattanooga Free Press. Whatever. I'm gonna look at the state representatives, see if I see Beth Harwell on there. Randy McNally, Lieutenant Governor of Tennessee. State Senator. So I see some big names. But let's see who Phil Bredesen has behind him. <sighs> Mayor of Chattanooga, though, is a Democrat. That's pretty big. Looking through this, Phil Bredesen has Joe Biden, who is Obama's vice president, Senator Tammy Duckworth. She unseated Mark Kirk in Illinois, Democratic Senator Doug Jones, who won that stunning upset in Alabama over uh, Steve Bannon, pedophile. He's got his endorsement. And also Ron White, who's a progressive Democrat from Oregon. Duckworth, also progressive, more, more or less not too progressive. And Jones is more like a moderate. Yeah, she's got, and he's also got one of the guys who dropped out to this race. Let's see if there's any independents. Yeah, there's Clay Travis, a sports radio host, but that's not even official yet. But Survey Monkey Axios poll. Bredesen is only at, f at over 50, and it's at 51 in one of these polls. And one poll, and that was a Democratic poll. Survey Monkey, not a 
is not a partisan poll, and he was at 51 back in April. Survey Monkey Axios poll came out June 11th to July 2nd. That's when the poll was run. And yeah, Blackburn way over 55%. So that's why I think Blackburn can win this, or will win this. Now let's go to the governor's race. Carl Deans won the Democratic primary. Bill Lee is actually beating Carl Dean. So there's been some polls that show Carl Dean over Diane Black by four, over Randy Boyd by two. Beth Harwell seemed like the best candidate though. She was over Carl Dean by ten, but Bill Lee, Bill Lee will be fine. He's he's pulling over Carl Dean right now. Diane, Diane Black, Diane Black, if she. She pulls off a miracle at this point. Her other pulls, she was up by 9 points and 11. Randy Board, if he pulls off a little less than a miracle, he was up by 3 and 9. This one, I think Beth Harwell would be the best, would be the best thing, even though she's clearly not going to win. She was up by 5 her first poll, but as more votes came in, Paul Dean was still at 33% of her polls. Beth Harwell went from 38 to 43, so. Diane Black over Craig Fitzhugh, who's the guy that's not gonna win. That's not gonna win. Was up by 15. Randy Boyd was up by 9. Beth Harwell was up by 20 over the State House Minority Leader, so. Yeah. I think, I think we got the edge in this Tennessee Senator, definitely Tennessee Governor race. Let's go to past elections. Yeah, Lamar Alexander in 2014. He actually carried Memphis, but barely. He won. He won every county but Nashville, it looks like. Let's go to 2008. That's probably more. Yeah, it looks like in 2008 it was not that competitive of an election. Lamar Alexander got 65% of the vote. It's like Lamar Alexander actually narrowly carried Nashville, but lost a county out west. 2002. This is the last one I'm going to check. 2002. The 2002 map, I think, is what's going to... Is what the 2018 map's going to look like. I think it's the closest representation. Is... Bob Clement was a Democrat. Lamar Alexander, the Republican. Lamar Alexander, yeah. 54.27%, Bob Clement got 44.34, so, semi-close, but Lamar Alexander was a clear winner. Looks like Knoxville went to Alexander, Chattanooga, I think that went to Alexander, Memphis went to Alexander, Nashville went to Clement, and that central part of the state had a lot of blue in it. So that's what it's gonna look like. The Fred Thompson races, he obviously won. Fred Thompson was a weird senator, but
I think the Democrats will carry Nashville, probably not carry Memphis. It's gonna be close though. Close, close, close. I'm also making a change of my projections. Montana Senate goes from lean R to lean D. West Virginia Senate goes from lean D, stays a lean D. Florida Senator, now I'm adding tilt features. North Dakota Senator goes from toss up to lean Republican. Florida Senator goes from toss up to tilt Republican. I think we're gonna do well this midterms. Indiana Senators tilt Republican. Now a thing that may be important. House district turnouts. Divided house districts. Here, Congressman David Kustoff is facing a primary challenge from the left. Oh no, not from the left, from the right. Trump endorsed Congressman David Kustoff, and it looks like David Kustoff will be fine. 52.9% to George Flynn, the guy who's challenging him the right, 42.3%. So, looks like the Republicans aren't going to lose another, another candidate. So, yeah, 10.6 point lead. Well, let's see if George Flynn gets behind David Kustoff. Otherwise, the Republicans will not lose that seat. What it covers is pretty much every district. It covers all of the Memphis suburb, suburbs going north up to the state line, going slightly west, but not touching Nashville. So it covers all of those ex-urban suburbs. And yeah, Republic, 46,000 Republicans and 16,000 Democrats are the, are the voters so far. And the primary, it's about halfway in, so double that, so... There we got a primary turnout advantage, yeah. We'll be okay. I don't think any of the districts are in play in Tennessee. Zero. Which one is Memphis? Which one has Memphis in it though? District nine. The Republicans are running a candidate on a vote. That is Memphis. It's actually only only Memphis. It's not the rest of the county. So House District 9 is solid to the Democrats because it doesn't have the rest of the county when it's about one percent of the county with population wise in it. So yeah, if the Republicans would have Beth Har Harwell's running on the Republican side, She's state speaker of the house, so they already got Republican state legislature and state, and they also got the state senate majority leader, so they could pass Jerry, they could do some gerrymandering to, yeah. Jim Cooper is District 5, I believe, yeah. Jim Cooper is Nashville. He's not going to be defeated. Update on the voting totals. Marsh Blackburn still at 84.2. Aaron Pettigrew at 15.8. Phil Bredesen's actually ticked up a little bit to 92.7. That's important. Brewer News Network now is a major projection. Bill Lee's the nominee for governor with 37% of the vote. Carl Dean. We can also report that Carl Dean has fallen under 78%. Craig Fitzhugh is winning those ex outer suburbs, though, or outperforming himself and the rest of the state. Memphis is yet to be known. 
I think Craig Craig Fitz you can dominate the Memphis area and take Carl Dean under 75 and maybe even under 70 percent that's the way you can do it we need Memphis to come in though before I could I'm going to say Diane Black's not going to win. She's not going to be any big counties. Yeah. Bill Lee is winning everything. He's winning Chattanooga. He's winning Nashville. Memphis, not him. The only big city he's not winning is Knoxville. And that's where he boys from Knoxville, so... Obviously, not going to win that. in the primary. But it looks like Randy Boyd will get behind him. They're all going to get behind Marshall Blackburn, though. Randy Boyd's also got that Memphis area. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm still pounding the gavel now. Without Memphis, in, I'm still pounding the gavel. No Memphis is coming, but... Some of the Memphis suburbs are coming in, and, and they're showing that Craig Vince, you on the Democratic side, is doing well. Or better than he usually is. If Randy Boyd could go just dominate, that's what it's going to have to take. Diane Black doesn't have a chance in hell. Unless she comes out of nowhere and takes Memphis. Randy Boyd's chances. They're 89% in Knoxville, so. Hold on, I'm gonna run that up. But run that up. Looking for the first votes out of Memphis. Nashville Billy to get the gavel pound on MSNBC. Has to go run up the remainder of the votes in Nashville and Chattanooga to a lesser extent. Chattanooga is a democratic area. Let's see if Marsha Blackburn could get over 85%. That's that's what I want as a Republican. We need United Republicans more than we need. Phil Bredesen's at 92.5 on the Democratic side, so just needs to get the 70 percent of Democrats are holding out to support, and then he needs to go just start campaigning. And he needs to campaign, so it's going to be a long shot for him to win. Yeah, and all these ex-urban areas, areas two, two counties away from two counties away from Memphis, two counties north of Memphis, Carl, or Craig Fitz, you've got 91% of the vote, so Carl Dean's going to have issues over there, that's going to keep Tennessee red. Bredesen's still up to 92, Marsha Blackburn's creeping up a little bit, let's see if she could go get, she's at 82 in Nashville, that's okay. 81 in Knoxville, 84 in Chattanooga. Needs to get more 80, 86, 87, 88. Then try, you've got to get those holdouts. That's what's important in a close race. Is you got to get, just solidify your base at this level. Because Tennessee is a long shot for the Democrats. But if the Republicans can't solidify their base, they're going to go in there and start spending more resources. So, yeah, that's what's going on. A lot of the Randy Boyd areas are coming in, so 
Bill Lee, the Republican nominee for governor. Yeah. Bill Lee, the Republican nominee for governor, is going to keep pounding the gavel harder now. More counties keep coming in to the south, keep filling in. Just keep showing Billy. Yeah, these major cities aren't carrying enough votes. Unless Randy Boyd gets every single voter in Memphis to turn out, he doesn't have a chance. And neither does Diane Black, who's even longer a shot. There's some little counties, though. Billy's getting everything around Nashville. And he's getting Tennessee 1st District. He's getting a lot of shit. New results. Looking for this check mark by Billy's name. We're just to see something in in Memphis and see how badly that could affect Carl Dean, the Democrat for governor. I'm gonna go through flaming hoops if I. I'm gonna try to go through flaming hoops, I guess. Started for the Ravens, but I he's obviously never gonna make it. Right. Here's the line. Joe Flacco, third quarterback as of now, he's obviously gonna make it. Joe Flacco's not the third quarterback. Lamar Jackson, first round pick, he's obviously gonna make it. He never, he never goes first round pick. RG3 is already the third string quarterback. There's no doubt he's that. I am Lamar Jackson and Joe Flacco. So, RG3, this is about. Play well. Except for the Ravens in this, is they could rest. They could rest their two big, big quarterbacks in the preseason and still have a decent person on the field, not totally embarrass themselves. And motor for RG3 is. Also, he's never going to make the team if he somehow did the practice squad or on third string quarterback. If they had a roster spot open, he'd be making them if they have an open roster spot. Yeah, that's what I do, Luke. That's what I do. So Raven. Because they already obviously got two quarterbacks. It's just, do they have room for a third? Is the first question. And another question that's relevant, but probably. Who are you talking to, man? Why are you watching Laser Beam, dude? Laser Beam is funny as hell. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh 
my lord, at the I'm the laser beam OG. I've watched him since he had 50 or like 30k, so yeah. spot from someone who is and it, another question the other question that I thought that I thought about and I'm gonna ask is it's probably not too relevant I don't know if the Ravens are thinking about it but is RG3 willing to play on a team's practice squad that's a major question because of any of the goal in the play, they're practicing a lot of things, less than the NFL league minimum, that is he willing to take less than the NFL league minimum. He sat out football last year, took the, he took the Ravens offer, this comeback year, could he, would he be willing to do that? I would say yes. RG3, although is a semi big head, I think some of that hot head stuff, some of the stuff they can eat hot shit and all that, kind of went out the window. After the game, but I think he's doing more up there in the practice squad spot somewhere, or maybe for, or get a backup job somewhere with a shitty quarterback. So like the Giants? I'm a Giants fan. Uh, yeah, me too. We just didn't have a good season last year. I don't think RG3 would fit well there because they have Davis Webb, Kyle Laletta. They're being already competing for a backup, so you invite you invite RG3 to that mix, and you're potentially already giving up on. On Davis Webb with the third round pick last year, Kyle Laletta was a fourth round pick this year. You're already giving up on one of those two guys if you bring in RG3 to to compete. Let Davis Webb and Kyle Laletta get out. And they need to get a real quarterback in 2018. Though. That's why I wouldn't mind them sucking this year because the quarterback it's not as great as it was this year. Obviously the draft, but. It's okay next year. They got the defensive line, so they don't need to tank too bad because the top five picks are all going to be defensive linemen next year. But they don't need to tank too bad. They just need to not make the playoffs. And they could get like Drew Locke from Missouri, who threw like 60 touchdowns last year, or something like that. So I think the Giants need to get a, a quarterback. One who I like though is Justin Herbert out of Oregon, but that's my personal opinion. He'll be a top 10 pick though. If the Giants could get around number 10, they should be able to grab Justin Herbert, so. Giants will be alright at quarterback. Eli What? I honestly think Eli will work for another year or two. Just they don't need to re rely on their Davis Webb does have Davis Webb, their third round pick last year, does have a good NFL body size, but well, I haven't seen enough of him to, to see if he's an NFL starting quarterback. Paul Oletta, for what I've seen of him, is too weak of an arm. He's just going to be a solid backup to Davis Webb at this point. It's going to be a backup. So, 
The Giants are fine with backup quarterbacks. I think, um, or would be a good place for RG3, not the Redskins. Kansas City's got Alec. Right, Kansas City's got. What's his name? Not Connor Cook. Or would be a good place for RG3. Jets. The Jets. Sam Darnold. Uh, I think the guy Chad Henning is a little bit old. They need RG3 to come in there with veteran experience. If he's willing to be a, if he's willing to just be a backup, I think he'll be okay. Cleveland. That Cleveland acquired Tyrod Taylor, drafted Baker Mayfield. They don't need. Back. Yeah, I'm thinking, thinking the Jets. Okay.
guys, guys, guys. Stop firing bullets. Let's go to the let's go to the epicenter of the circle. Where the trade let's go. 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 Let's
I think the Republicans will be fine in holding the Senate, but... Also, I got some more good news for the, the Republicans that... It seems a little far-fetched, but I do think Bob Hugan is a very good chance of unseating Mendez, but Hugan's on a financial conservative. I also saw that Arnett in Delaware, he's only down by 8 points to Tom Carter. So he could at least make, I don't think he's going to win, but I think he could clearly make the Democrats spend more resources in Delaware. That's what I think will happen is he'll make the Democrats spend more resources than, than they should in a Democratic state like Delaware. Close enough so the winner spends his resources. That's the to a target you in a state of So, yeah. With the poll numbers out of Delaware coming out, I don't know. They're not too relevant to what's going on in Tennessee, but they're somewhat relevant with the Democratic with the DCCC fundraising. They're somewhat relevant to what's going on, so. So yeah, they're somewhat relevant to what's going on, so. DCCC has decent fundraising. They're doing better than the Republicans in fundraising, but I think if the Republicans their strategy now they have less resources and they're getting good candidates like Bob Hugo who can self fund. That's good so they don't go with uh, not only a small shot but it's a hard Senate seat they don't have to spend money on to win a very hard Senate seat to win. They don't have to use resources on that because Bob Hugo is a pharma pharmaceutical CEO of a pharmaceutical company, they could make, um, he could raise his own money enough to win. That's good. And New York, they also got a candidate named Shell Farley. She doesn't have much of a chance to win, but again, she's vowed to raise $10 million, and what that can do is it can make the Republicans or or make the Democrats and Senator Christian Gillibrand make her spend money that she doesn't she normally doesn't want to spend, but she's a rock star fundraiser, so Yeah. She's a rock star fundraiser, so she won't have any issue with Shield Far. She's not vulnerable, but But it, if we're gonna raise some money against her, if we if we as Republicans can raise some money against her, that's always good news. If you could, if someone who you know you're not gonna beat because of the demographic, to that state, someone who you know you're not gonna beat is, if you can raise money against that person. That tells you you can have the somewhat energized base so you have a chance. Yeah. So the Republicans will probably not hold the House, unfortunately. The House is trending towards the left. Polls are showing Democrats leading. And they're usually liberal Democrats, too. Connor Lamb type candidates. I mean, yeah, he's going to win. He's going to win in Pennsylvania. He should really run to challenge Pat Toomey in, 22, in 2022. He should run to be a United States Senator. I think he'd easily win. Connor Lamb won.
Connor Liam would easily win. He would easily bat beat Pat Toomey. Problem is, if he ran against Bob, if he tried to primary Bob Casey, I don't think he'd have a chance in hell. Because the Democrats vote for him in general election, could be, because to them he's better than the Republican, but he would never have a chance going against other Democrats. That's the thing. So yeah, if he ran for governor in the Democratic primary, I don't think he'd have a chance. Governor or senator. After Tom Wolf retires. Actually, it's term limited, so it's going to be Tom Wolf's last term after he wins, which he will. Tom Wolf's not going to lose. Scott Wagner. <laughs> Build, 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 build. Turnout models in Tennessee look good. Tennessee's not going blue. Yep, it's now official. Billy's projected winner. Randy Boy just couldn't, couldn't run it up. In Memphis, even if he does win it, will clearly not be enough. Randy Boyd's going to be the next governor in Tennessee, probably. Yeah, Carl Dean had a good night, 78% of the vote. He'll be the next governor. Or, not the next governor. I, don't, I just don't think he can quite get enough to... Uh, Trump has a 50% approval rating, straight up 50, according to Rasmussen, is the most correct. Let's see what the Senate map 
I don't know why they're not moving the Senate map to lean Democrat. Or Arizona to lean Democrat. Arizona's going Democrat. Fox News has already said that. Even though Fox News is more of an opinion station. Has a lot more opinions on it. Unlike MSNBC or anything. Even though MSNBC is biased. Hella biased. I prefer watching Fox News over MSNBC any day, but MSNBC reports more, even though it's left wing, news. News, newsy type things. Fox News has a lot of opinions on it. You know, I'll keep watching Fox News. I don't, I'm not hating on Fox News. right now. Oh shit. Build, 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 build. Yep. What is 
is a right is choosing your own doctor. And if you believe health care is a right, why on earth did you help write Obamacare that caused six million people to have their health insurance canceled and Watching some of this stuff, Black Lives Matter is an extreme radical group that is just like the KKK and all that. They're extreme. They had something to start with, but now they're an extreme radical group. Black Lives Matter is insanely extreme. They're far to the left. Yeah, this is ridiculous. I did my regular 
He's an undercover communist. He's a communist. Socialism is communism. Socialism leads to communism. Your mom and I did everything today. So socialism. Barney is not a good politician. Barney. Barney's policies would lead us to communism. And then communism always comes crashing down. Because the people hate it. Because Donald Trump will now be standing in the bread line everywhere. Yeah, and then I woke up like two hours later and start to lose it. So yeah. Communism does not work. Democratic socialism or whatever it is do not work. We need Republican ideals. Those are the only way a government works. The Republican ideals. Democratic ideals don't really work. Democrats vote to shut down the government. Democrats vote to. That's what I told you. Yeah, I feel like both of shut down government and don't, don't pay CJ out of here. Republicans are trying to get a deal on DACA. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they're trying to get a deal on DACA. They were. They rejected Trump's deal, so. Trump offered them a deal, they didn't take it, so now it's the Democrats. I really fault. Want to, I want to keep them yeah, the Democrats are crazy. They're an extreme radical group. So yeah. Tennessee will be a rebuttal on democratic policies. They will show that Democrats are stupid. And Democrats will not win this midterm. Except maybe the House. Because they're running with Democrats. Old timer Democrats like. 70s Democrats when they were actually semi decent. Southern style Dixie Crat type thing on this when I was in the 40s. and they act like it's to help out their voter base. Like, Man, it's all gone. 
will be unseated, Joe Donnelly will be unseated, Claire McCaskill will be unseated. Dean Heller might even well, might win, yeah. looks like he's a good chance.
That's pretty good. I'm gonna go. So you and I may have a difference. 